you are always in this defensive mode. <laughs> Even when there's no threat, you're in defensive mode. So in that state, you end up hurting those around you just as you're broken and waiting for someone to say sorry. You broke someone too who's waiting for that same sorry that you're, you're not willing to look their way and say sorry. And the other part that helped me overcome grief was taking responsibility for your actions. It is not an easy thing, but it's something noble and it's something that is very healing. Along the grief journey, as people hurt you, you develop a certain kind of skin, a certain kind of character that when they hurt me, I hurt them back. Or if they, if I cannot hurt them back, I hurt the, the weakest person around. Sometimes it's uh, knowingly, sometimes it's um, consciously you hurt those around you because of how the experiences you've been brought up into that you are always in this defensive mode. <laughs> Even when there's no threat, you're in defensive mode. So in that state, you end up hurting those around you. And I want to tell you that there are so many choices that I made that hurt those around me, that hurt very good people that were in my life or that have been in my life that it takes God's grace to be able to realize that you have broken someone and that you need to go and help them heal. It takes God's grace to realize that as you have been broken or as you are carrying on the pains and blaming people and looking at people with anger for breaking you, it takes God's grace to sit back and reflect that as I look at the other person this painfully and bitterly, isn't there someone in my life who is looking at me at that same anger? When I got this, it hit me so hard. There are some things that cannot be undone. There are some things that, however big an apology may be, it may not change it. But still, it's good to make an effort to take responsibility. Just as you're broken and waiting for someone to say sorry, you broke someone too who's waiting for that same sorry that you're you're not willing to look their way and say sorry, but you focus on the people who have broken you and then you cannot say sorry. And it also brought me to the point that I realized that some of these people who are also breaking me or, or rather who hurt me along the way, there were also people who were hurting, people who had also had very gruesome experiences in life and were just trying to also go by in life and just did not know how to express it. It found that for me I was a calmer person but some of them were more aggressive and that is how they expressed themselves. So I humbled myself and tried to say sorry to those I could say sorry to. It was not easy. It's always not easy going to apologize. But taking responsibility for your actions, it's a very good step to make up and to also help someone heal. Because just as you, there is someone else also who is waiting on you to go back and say sorry. Just saying sorry will greatly help them heal. Sometimes it will be rejected openly. Sometimes they will shut down. When you say sorry, they'll walk away. Sometimes, I mean, if you send a message, they may not even reply. But you have taken the step to say sorry. It's okay. It's not easy to be rejected, but it's okay. 
Take responsibility for your actions. If you have walked down the path of alcohol or drug abuse or substance abuse and along the way your life has deteriorated, you have to take responsibility for your life. You have to gather your life together. You have to make that decision to live. It is always not easy, but how badly you want to live is how dedicated, how persistent you'll be committed to having a good life. I would still recommend that a spiritual awakening journey is very important because it opens you up to possibilities. It opens you up to things that are impossible to do in, in your humanly nature, but with God it's made easy. As I conclude, there was a part uh, I was seeking out on how to forgive myself. It was by the grace of God that I was able to walk through my life. Walking through my life from when I was eight years old, when my dad died, up to the point that I was in life. I could say that in the normal sense, I wouldn't have done that, but by the grace of God, I walked back and saw my life, like my whole life played in front of me like it was a movie. Walking through life, seeing, walking through the funeral, walking after the funeral, walking through life without my dad, and then the challenges, and then I went to school, and then everything, just seeing it in details, and seeing the people that I had along the way, the people that I wasn't grateful enough, that I should have said thank you, but I didn't say thank you because, I don't know. And then I saw the people who were kind, who were there always. And then I saw the people, all the friends who came and went over time. It was a reflective moment. And from here, that is where I also got to draw lessons, taking responsibility for my actions, forgiving others, forgiving myself. Because after walking through my life, it was not an easy journey. Seeing all the bad, the ugly, and then the ugliest things in your life, the things that give you a sense of shame, the things that you're suppressing so much and you just don't want them to ever, you don't want to remember all those things. And as they passed by, I saw that they did not have any power over me. So I don't know if it's something that you could also do just to walk through your life again from the beginning, from whichever point it was that maybe you lost your loved one, that you got a disappointment or what. Just walking through your life and reflecting on all those, the details about your life to where you are and see where do you need to forgive yourself? Where do you need to forgive others? Where do you need to take responsibility for your actions? For with this comes the greater power of healing. I thank you so much today for joining with me in Overcoming Grief with Theodora. I hope life treats you kindly and may God be with you always. Thank you.